Happy? Good. Hi, I'm Steve from 1233D. Today we will be bringing part 3 of the Voron build. This is the Revision D kit supplied by LDL Motors. Stay tuned. So for those of you who've been following along, I have now completed all of the, the mechanical assembly for the machine. We have all the wiring in place and I'll talk you through what we've done to this point. So from the last video, you will have seen that we didn't have the gantry fitted. We had the basic gantry assembled and we had the frame assembled and I started to place into the base some of the electrical components, i.e. the mainboard power supply, that type of thing. If you want to check back on that video, please see the link in the description or we'll post it on screen somewhere. But apart from that, I will dive right in. A couple of things to note. Regarding actually fitting the gantry, that was relatively easy. What I did was I suspended the frame with four cable ties to basically hang it in place while I lined up the carriages for the linear rails onto the actual gantry. I secured those in place. Once I'd done that, I then kept the cable ties in place and I proceeded to route the belts. I did all four corners first. Doing this allowed me to basically have the gantry suspended so it wouldn't fall under its own weight. And then I proceeded to run the other belts around the extruder. They in all honesty were the more challenging ones because quite complicated how they root and if you get them wrong then obviously the machine isn't going to work as it should do so take extra care when you're studying the uh, Voron build guide for actually rooting the belts currently all of the belts are still long I haven't trimmed any of them off yet because I need to slightly tension them so I'm going to pull the belts a little bit tighter tighten everything down prior to running the first prints but fundamentally they are all in place everything moves around as it should do a couple of things that i did notice so in particular these little pulleys here as you can see there wasn't any instructions in the actual build guide how tight these should be so when i assembled these printed parts these little pulley wheels didn't rotate freely so obviously I noticed straight away that the belt runs on these pulleys, so I just loosened off the screws until I had a little free movement on the pulley. If you don't do that, basically you're going to rip the teeth off your belt. Once you've put the belts in place, just check these little things, move everything around, make sure it moves as it should do. A couple of other points to mention, when I actually installed the, the gantry, I needed to make sure that it was absolutely square and parallel to the rest of the frame and it's a simple case of if it doesn't come right back and it isn't touching squarely to the back of the assembly then you just loosen a couple of screws get it all trued up tighten them screws back up run it backwards and forwards to make sure that you you parallel and you're good to go and you can then move forward i have also assembled the stealth burner and obviously this is in a separate guide within the war run pages there is a dedicated section to assembling the stealth burner hence to why we have a little bit of filament poking out of the top of the stealth burner part of the setup process is that you insert an off cut of filament to make sure that you've got it tensioned correctly and everything's lined up as it should be we do have the tap probe fitted again this was an upgrade that i saw to be beneficial for this build i wanted to keep bed meshing and whatever else is as simple and as trouble free as i possibly could albeit the the probe that comes with the kit will be fine the benefit to this is this system eliminates your zn stop limit switch as well so basically it's killing two birds with one stone everything is then routed very very neatly via this one cable in the cable chain, I have the limit switches attached to the bottom of the gantry here, which plug in. We have a little board that plugs in. The cable then routes around the back of the print. There's a nice little channel in the print where the cable routes up to this mountain and then follows the same path through the cable chain down below. The two rear stepper motors, I routed this inside the channel and then used the plastic cover strip that LDO provides in the kit to secure that in place so they're nice and neatly tucked out of the way. They all run through this larger cable chain at the back, straight down to the base of the machine. What else did I encounter? I think in terms of actual assembly to this point, I haven't struggled. I've, I've found it really 
quite enjoyable. It's just one of them projects that I've taken my time on. I've done a little bit here and there as and when I've got a spare bit of time. So I've not rushed it. Tried to make sure that everything as I assemble it is as close to perfect as I could get it because I do believe that when we actually come to tune the machine and get it up and running, that should make things a lot easier going forward. I've not really come across any unsuspecting hiccups or anything like that. I did mention in the previous video about the build plate and the, the Wago connector. So that's just something to take into account. So around the machine, I've now fitted all of the skirts. I have fitted the LCD touch screen. We've got the intake fans fitted in the side. And on the opposite side, we're just going to get exhaust. So that will basically suck air across all of the electronics in the base of the machine, keeping everything cool. We have also completed pretty much all of the wiring. Chris came in and did some filming while I was doing the wiring for the base of the machine. And we will cut to that section of the video roundabout. Now, we're now at the point where we have installed all of the electrical components in the base of the machine. First off, the Leviathan mainboard. Fitted to the board, we have a Raspberry Pi. This is a Pi 4B. The Leviathan board is shipped with this little breakout board, which plugs straight onto the pins of the Pi, taking power from the board directly to the Pi, keeping things nice and simple. Previously, you would have needed an independent 5 volt power supply to power this no longer needed less components less things can go wrong raspberry pi is then connected via a usb straight to the leviathan board so we have the ethernet cable i've routed it through into here goes down along and out there there is a little bit of access in there all i've done is doubled it back on itself everything will be covered up neat and tidy very simply that cable plugs directly into the back so if you want to connect this to a cable network to send your files you absolutely can basically i've kept it as short as i can to get to where i need to go all of the wago connectors are fitted so we've got our mains 240 volt coming in they power each of these three wago connectors which then send off to the corresponding places so we have mains going to the solid state relay which will heat our heat bed we also have mains going into our 24 volt power supply so basically we have a 240 supply going in and then we'll have two cables live and neutral coming out going to the solid state relay the neutral from the solid state relay goes directly to the heat bed so this is basically providing switched live via the main board. We have the earths. So the power supply is earthed. The heat bed is also earthed. We have then the chassis of the printer also earthed. Very important if your machine gets a short or anything like that. With the frame being metal, you need to earth it. Otherwise, you're going to light up like a christmas tree so this is basically the usb hub if you like for the toolhead board i.e the nighthawk this is powered by 24 volts this is then connected via a usb c cable here runs through the conduit again to the raspberry pi so this is the board that fits in the stove burner and very very simply this connects via one cable the cable is a usb form of a can bus cable it simplifies the wiring it keeps everything a lot cleaner in my mind it's just really really practical useful and makes perfect sense so we have that part which will get fitted in the stove burner it makes wiring back from the tool head down the cable chain back to here just a lot simpler and cleaner we have fitted the screen so we've got a ribbon cable to connect from the screen directly to the pi output that will then power the screen no other cables apart from that a few things worthy of pointing out when the board ships these terminals there is one two three four five these five terminals have jumpers in simple terms jumpers are little connectors that bridge pins so you've got three pins the jumper bridges two of those pins depending on what position those jumpers are in will depend on the output voltage to said socket so our implements that we have here i.e we have the thermistor for the heat bed we have the fan filter and we also have pcb fan 
These are all 24 volt fans. If you were to add any anything else like extra fans or whatever, you would need to ensure that your fan voltage matches what you set the jumper to. So our position, these jumpers are set to output 24 volts. So that needs to be checked. Make sure that when you're assembling this, those jumpers correlate with the correct voltage that's marked on the board are right for the actual fans that you are using. I did see a report of a guy that had built the same kit and he was asking why his fans weren't working. And it was because he'd got the jumper set to five volts, not 24 volts. Well, obviously it's a 24 volt van, five volts isn't gonna make it spin. That was why his fans weren't working. So please pay attention to that. Other points to make you very aware of. Solid state relay is quite a dangerous piece of equipment so obviously we're playing around here with mains voltage so it is imperative and i can't emphasize this enough that when you're following the wiring diagram from ldo's website that you meticulously follow it step by step it is clearly labeled one two three four next to the three and the four you have got a positive and a negative symbol hence red and black wire then you have got your voltage coming in and then going back out. So it is really, really important that you follow that diagram because if you get anything here mixed up, one, you could electrocute yourself, you could damage components, or as the actual LDO guide stipulates, catastrophic damage could occur in their own words. But we have our exhaust fans fitted, they're all wired up, you get a little PCB splitters that will basically, we've got two fan sockets going in, one cable coming out going to the board, so it just makes everything clean and tidy. All of these are included in the kit. There are some revision printed parts for holding them to the frame, again listed on LDO's Revision D build guide. One part that I see to be different from the actual image that I've got on LDO's website, this trunking that runs along the centre in their diagram it does show more space between the fire fan board and the power supply so you can actually clip on the lid to this however the din rails are mounted in exactly the correct location they can't go anywhere else so the spacing is correct the power supply and the main board where they are located do not give me enough room to be able to click on the cover for this so I have come up with a workaround. What I propose to do is the cover strip that will fit in there. Where my where my stepper motor cables are, I'm basically gonna put a nick, a notch, and cut that part out so that I can then feed it in there and snap it into place because otherwise it's gonna be impossible to cover those up. And I would prefer them to be covered. We'll migrate back to the studio with the machine stood upright and we will continue the video from there. That allowed us to basically then work from this end, so the hot end, extruder end, back down to the board. So the idea of working this way down is because if you've got any excess cable or whatever else, you can quite easily cable tie that together and tidily tuck it away in the base of the machine. You don't want a surplus of cables at this end. So I work from this end back. Once I've got everything in there, connected correctly again i won't emphasize this enough when it comes to the wiring take your time study the diagrams over and over again when you've completed a certain step check your work compared to the build guide just so you you're on peace of mind that you've done it correctly and everything is wired as it should be we shouldn't forget that this is mains voltage coming to this machine so you need to take care in summary we are up to the point where very very soon we shall be flashing the raspberry pi building the firmware configuring clipper getting ready for our our first test print in this series i probably won't include the enclosure because obviously that's just an add-on part afterwards to get the machine actually up and running and printing we'll be using pla to run those test prints with and then we can add the enclosure panels afterwards quite simple everything is provided in the kit the only thing that you will have to print out for those is the actual brackets and hinges that hold the bits and pieces into place but apart from that we're on track for the next video to hopefully show how we've configured it what configuration file we've used did i encounter any problems using that configuration file and hopefully running our first Benchy, please be sure to check back 
for that episode. If you have any questions, please do not forget to drop them in the comments box below and we will try our best to get back to you as soon as possible. And if you haven't done so already, please do not forget to like, subscribe and share. I will say goodbye for now and we will see you on the next one. As always, we aim to have the most competitive 3D printer prices on the market. If you see any of our printers being sold by a mainstream retailer for less, please drop us an email using the link in the description and we'll do our very best to beat their price. Also, if you're watching from outside the UK, check the description for links to our European 123 3D sister stores.